so welcome. We are now beginning the R example. And Sima will show. Yeah, so uh, what we have here in the document insert page are many different examples of R, R uses. Uh, first things first, we need to get ourselves one version of R. So we can do that by uh, looking for different versions of R with the module spider command. And we will see that there are plenty of these different versions. So what we want to probably do is take the, take the latest one and, and let's use that one. And we load the module and now we have R at our disposal. So we can launch the R with R if we want to test out code interactively here. But of course, uh, what we really want to do is, is to write something that can be run on the on the uh, on the queue. I'll make the shell a bit smaller so it fits. Yeah, and we good. don't want to save the workspace image. So let's do something uh, in uh, in the queue itself. So. We have here a small uh, serial example, uh, serial R example. So let's copy it to the uh, to the clipboard and uh, write this uh, Slurm file for this example. So what we have here is that we ask for <coughs> uh, five minutes of time. We run. Uh, with 100 memories, 100 megabytes of memory, 100 memories, and then we uh, write the output to this R serial output, and we load R. Let's specify the version that we we had. I'll quickly check, save this, and check what version we had. Uh, so we had this version of R. Let's write that specific version uh, into R our requirements. So over here. Yeah. And here we see that we are using this R script to run our R. And what this R script basically does is that it's a wrapper for R. Uh, it, there's also this R command batch uh, that you can use to run R non-interactively, but uh, this R script is even better. So what it does, it, it runs a single R file that we have, and it, will, uh, it won't save on a workspace state afterwards, and it won't load any previously existing workspace uh, environment. So in R, if you're running it interactively, like you noticed at the start when I opened the R interpreter, it will ask to save the state of the uh, situation. And you might want to do that, but you also might not want to like continue where you left off. And in these cases, the R script is better because it, it runs uh, runs this like clean slate, especially with the vanilla setting mm -hmm. where it doesn't load any like existing environment that you have currently in the folder. Uh, it also will produce the output straight to the standard output, so you will see the output uh, when you when you run the code. So all the print statements and so forth will be produced to the to the standard output. So basically, makes it look run like a standard program instead of something yes. made for interactive. Otherwise, you will get these R out files that the R normally produces with when you run with the R command batch. So let's run this small um, R script. It's it's a bit fancy because we use the command arguments here, but this is just to demonstrate how you could use, for example, array task IDs within the R program itself. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing here is we are reading the command line arguments. We were giving these two values, the N and M, to this uh, R script. So uh, it reads them in and turns them into numbers within R, so we can use them in R. It prints them, uh, and then it creates matrices. Uh, first, a mat matrices of size n 
n, n, n times m matrices. First is A matrix and then this B matrix. And, and then it creates this C matrix. And uh, then it does this uh, matrix calculation where it does a matrix multiplication between A transpose of uh, B and then adds uh, two times C to it. So this is like just a simple um, mathematics operation. Mm -hmm. Whoops, what happened there? So let's let's copy this also, and let's create this uh, R, R script that we want to run. So let's copy this here and save the buffer. So now we have our uh, script and then we have our serial job. Let's first try running this R, uh, with our script, this R serial without uh, any, uh, any S run statements or anything like that. So just to check that it works. Normally, of course, we would want to run this somewhere to, uh, well, maybe on our laptop to test that it works. So when we run this, we see mm -hmm. with values four and three, we see that these, we have four uh, rows and three columns. And, right. and then when we, create this matrix uh, by matrix multiplication, we create this four by four matrix. So this seems to work. Mm -hmm. Now let's run it with S run in a node. So with S run is as simple as adding S run and maybe some requirements of time. So let's put like a 15 minute time uh, uh, time and uh, requirement and maybe two gigabytes of memory, it's overkill, but nevertheless, it should work. Okay, it works in the queue. We see here that we got something like LC measurement failed using C. So what this means is that the environment in the, when we were running it, it was a bit different than what we're running now. It, uh, there was something, some uh, language setting missing, but it's mm. not, it doesn't affect our results. So it, it's not something we should worry about. Okay, let's try submitting the, the script with sbatch. So let's use the R serial uh, slurm and let's submit it with sbatch. And we see that uh, it's submitted. It has already run. If we look at last few jobs we see here we we have the the previous job that we run with s run ourselves and here we have the slurm script and we see that it it actually didn't use almost any memory of course because it was so simple and it uh, finished quite quickly and if, now if we look at the r uh, r serial out that it was creating because it, we had defined the, the output file. We see that yeah, here are the startup error messages that we had previously. Mm -hmm. They don't really matter. We can define this a language if we want some to get rid of these messages, but it doesn't matter. And then we get the, the end results. Yeah, okay. Oh. So let's, let's do another quick example of uh, of running this uh, R with its internal parallelization. So he, in over here, uh, we have, okay, what's this? Uh, here we have a link to this, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it seems to be that the, uh, we have to update this information. Okay. Uh, this uh, R benchmark is something, it's a famous R benchmark, but uh, we probably need to update the link to it. But anyways, if we were to run some R script that we would want to use uh, mm -hmm. the internal parallelization within R, uh, R has been compiled with yeah. these uh, libraries that can use the internal parallelization. We would just need to specify the number of tasks and set that the number of threads that we want to use is the number of tasks. And that's it. And we could submit it. 
right. we'll have to update this. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is also a possibility of using this Rs parallel package to run this uh, parallelization. In that case, we would set the number of threads to one because we will use the parallel package to the, do the parallelization. And then we would run these, uh, use these MCL applies, which are these parallel applications or other, other, there's other statements that we can use to test out, mm -hmm. let's say this uh, matrix inversion here. So uh, there's plenty of ways of running R in parallel, uh, right. these parallel packages. Okay, so. And that's about it. Great. Thanks for the example.